this is being broadcast from the hospital in Houston, and it's uh, unbelievable dedication. I, I don't, Rabbi Wolby, but at a time when we do a change and maybe do an emergency change over it, I said, no, he says, we, this is that, this is Rabbi Wolby's dedication to Torah, dedication to spreading Torah, and by virtue of such a father, that the father in heaven should be dedicated to the Rafur Shlema, the full and complete recovery of Rivka Batsahava. Okay, and that's our dedicate, Bo Hashem. With Hashem's loving grace, tonight we hope to finish Torah 6. Torah 6 is one of the most important lessons for life, as we'll see. Uh, we now listen, Rabbi Nachman spoke in his own words in the beginning of the Torah. The end of the Torah was compiled after Rabbi Nachman left this world. And Rabbi Natan is speaking now. What we're learning tonight is Rabbi Natan's summation of Torah 6. And we're going to learn everything come together, like they say in French, the denouement. Everything ties together. We learned a lot of different concepts. And at the end of tonight's shur, Bezerat Hashem will summarize everything. Okay, last week, we learned the awesome secrets embedded in the ability to serve Hashem in the up times and in the down times. And this week, we learned, <laughs> don't ever be down on yourself. Never. Then don't ever be down on yourself. You're a wonderful person. You're a beloved daughter, beloved son of Hashem. And there's no reason ever to be disappointed in yourself. Okay, do something right, get better. But then depression, Rabbi Nachman, you say despair has no place in the world. Okay, every soul has the potential of being a priceless jewel in the Almighty's crown. And we have this, everything's come from Hashem. Uh, right now in Israel, we're in a difficult and the, the country's on super alert and with the if it's not enough we've got one war it's uh on the verge of uh, something could be an all-out conflict with the not only go but we trust the shem we trust the shem we're learning torah this is the crisis robert well he's got his crisis he's learning torah we've got our crisis over here i know we're learning torah we're learning teach but that's what we're going to do with any crisis torah is the solution of any crisis any crazy. The like Gemara says you have a headache, go learn Torah. Go learn Torah. It's like a solution to everything. Okay, so we are now, if you're the classic Likute Moran is four paragraphs from the bottom, the bottom of Torah Vav. I'm going to say the complete idea in Hebrew and then translate it in English, and we'll go one by one. And uh, got some ground to cover. So with Hashem's loving grace, we'll cover it. Zesh Katav Shem Lemala, four paragraphs from the bottom. We're now re reviewing things we learned last week. And that's why I'm sorry I didn't give a much of a head, heads up. But if you have the chart from last week with all the numerical values, that's going to help. That's going to help because I'm going to refer to them. I'm not going to go and teach them all through because this will take three hours to do tonight's lesson. Just refer to. Okay, once again, when we say Kasa, it's the 161, the Aleph, Hey, Yud, Hey name spelled out in 10 letters. And when we say Sag, that's the ineffable name, Yud, K, Vav, K, also spelled out in 10 letters, which equals 63. So this is the meaning of what we said in last week's lesson. When a person has two types of expertise, Bucky, Bucky is the letters turned around of Yavik. We learn Yavik, which is the Shem's name, Yud Kei Vav Kei, Aleph Dalad Nun Yud, and uh, Ekia, Aleph He Yud Hey. The three of them together come out to 112. That's Bucky. If we turn around, uh, that's Yavik. That's Yavik. It's also a holy river and uh, between Israel and Jordan. Uh, it's mentioned in the Bible. It's a lot of Kabbalistic inferences. But when you turn around, that river is one half, 112. And 112 and 112 is 224. That's Derech. So the Yabek, the three, three names of Hashem, person acquainted with them, a person has the expertise. And having the expertise of being up and the expertise of being down, that is the way to serve Hashem. That is the way of penitence. That is the way to live your life. And I'm going to say this over 15 times, and it's not going to be enough. I'm going to say it over 26 times. Get into our head. Get into our heart. Don't forget you have to be serve Hashem when we're up and when we're down because we're going to be up and we're going to be down. 
because life is a Ferris wheel. That's a fact. You can't be up all the time. Your heart can't be in expansion all the time or it would burst. And your lungs can't be in contraction all the time because you wouldn't have any air. So the way Hashem creates a person, expansion and contraction, up and down, this is a normal, natural movement. But don't forget, this, this is one thing, big warning, big warning. Like you're going into battle, life is battle. And if I'm the intel officer, I have to warn you that when you're down, that's where the enemy is. The enemy is where you are down because the enemy, once you're down, he says, the enemy says, oh, you're in despair. That's what Rebbe Nachman says countless times. There is no despair in the world. There's no such thing as despair in the world. Don't ever be down. Don't ever be down on yourself because you're going to go up. On that Ferris wheel, you're down at the bottom, but you're going to go up. And this is what uh, King David tells us in Psalm 139. We say that over and over again, that when he's up, he sees Hashem. When he's down, he sees Hashem. When he's flying high in the heavens, he sees Hashem. And when he's so low, he said he finds himself at the, at the basement of purgatory. The basement of purgatory. We're not talking about ground level. This is uh, not ground level, Houston. This is the basement of purgatory. <laughs> There's a Shem too. Because you can't have anything existing without a Shem. Heaven, hell, it's all, it's all, it's all a Shem. It's all a Shem. Everything is a Shem. Everything is a Shem. So this is the meaning of what we have. That when you have both ways... Then you have, you have both sides, the up and the down. You have the derech. You have your way of life. You have the way of penitence. You have the way of survival. It's a way of survival. Okay. Now, there's also a, a yetzahara. There's also a inclination when you're up. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And uh, have to be careful because when you're up, the yetzahara says, hey, you're Muhammad Ali. You sting like a flutter. If you fly like a, you fly like a butterfly, you sting like a bee. There's nobody like me. And it, it, to make you want to be egotistic. So if he injects a person with ego, well, uh, that's bad because Hashem uh, can't be an, an egotistic person, the arrogant person, they can't be in the same universe. So now Rabbi Nathan continues. Rabbi Nathan is reiterating what we learned last week. He says the essence of the pathways of repentance is reached through the two types of expertise. Be an expert in up, an expert in down. And then the yamin, the right hand, yamin of God, your right hand, we said in Kabbalah, right is compassion, mercy, left is stern judgment. Shuva comes from Hashem's right hand. So when a person wants to get close to Hashem, and it doesn't matter what you have done, it doesn't matter what you've done wrong. Okay, if you've done wrong to another person, then it's not enough to do tshuva to Hashem. You got to make uh, penitence to the other person. You have to placate the other person. In other words, a person can't go and 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 uh, commit assault and battery on another human being and say, forgive me, Hashem. No. First of all, you're going to pay the guy's hospital bills. Second of all, you're going to apologize to him. You're going to do whatever you want. Or a person can't yell at his wife or smack his wife, heaven forbid, say, forgive me, Hashem. No way. You better get on your hands and knees. You better get tickets to the best restaurant and a bit of bouquet of flowers. You got to make penitence to your wife. But we're talking about if a person transgresses between himself and Hashem. It's between he and Hashem. A person messed up on something that connected to, to Kashrut, connected something that maybe he didn't guard his eyes, maybe he didn't preserve his, his or her modesty. They messed up in some way. They know the way he messed up because if they're students of Rabbi Nachman and they talk to Hashem, they do self-assessment, and they're trying to do tshuva, then they're going to find out what's wrong. When you want to correct, the Shem's going to show you. So sometimes we have difficulty in our life and we feel in our hearts that this is something Hashem's given us a wake-up call. Hashem, show me what I need to correct. This is how we do personal prayer. Hashem, tell me what I need to correct. And Hashem will do that when a person comes to Hashem innocently because Hashem's yamin, his right hand, is outstretched, pshuta, and there are other secrets here that Rabbi Natan doesn't explain here. He doesn't explain this. You have to go into the Arizal's writings. It, he says very quickly, he says, Yamin is gematria derech. I said, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Yamin, make a quick calculation. 
Mem Nun 9, that's 110. And Derek has 224. Hey, Rebbe Nathan, what are you talking about? You're selling me a bill of goods? I'm going to go and teach this? I, I, I It broke my head. So I figured, wait a second. Maybe go into the original source. So went into the Arizal's writings. And Arizal explains it. He explains it. If we take Yamin and write it out like we wrote out Hashem's name, the 10 letters, we take the Yud, Yud Vav Dalit. The mem, mem, mem. Yimbi, yud vav dalit. Nun, nun vav nun. And take the, the, the numerical and to take the word derech and write that out, dalit. The, 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 write that dalit resh haf, then it comes out the same. So it's it. This is inner secret that you, you just can't find. Sometimes this is, this is, it's the problem, but the virtue, problem, the virtue. Uh, this way, say that uh, Likute Moran is suitable for beginners and it's suitable for the greatest Kabbalist, the greatest Kabbalist scholars, because here I would learn that. And it's, you know what I'm, I'm learning like a simple, like a simple person and say, so we're talking about, but they have to go and into these writings, but Rabbi Natan and Rabbi Nachman, they've got this on the back of their hand. So this is what it means when he says this casually, it's a reference to Kabbalistic writings when in the end, it's a secret. It's an inner secret. When you add the inner letters if you mean when you add the inner dimension of Hashem's right hand, then it comes equal to the way of life to Derek. And these are secrets. This is this is why it's so you look into this way have to learn. It, it took us eight lessons to go look at Moran. And some people will say, Oh, wait a second, you really did that fast. You didn't do justice to that. And I all the time feel all, all the time feel I never do justice. I can do justice to Rabbi Nachman's stories, but we have to make a, a compromise between. Uh, holding our attention and being on our level that we can understand and not putting people to sleep because uh, otherwise it's not going to help them. But it's on, on our level, we're learning it to get us closer to Shem. We're not doing uh, living living room exercises and intellectual uh, gymnastics. We're getting closer to Shem. We're strengthening Amuna. This is the whole purpose of our Likute Moran. There are people that are a zillion times the scholars of Likute Moran that I am but when I learn Eklipte Moran, it's with the, I'm an immunologist, <laughs> and it's all for the purpose of learning emuna. Okay, so we continue on. Oh, and pshuta. Pshuta, we take the word pshuta and spell that out simply. It comes out 400. And 400, that's the names of the upper name, kasa, and the lower name, sag, together with the vowels, the vowels for the 400. Same thing. So we say, we say this every, it, it unbelievable kaleidoscope. It, it's, it's a mosaic. Rabbi Nachman is doing a mosaic. It's a, a exquisite, like a, a million piece mosaic. And it, it's, a, it's mind boggling. You go into to the secrets here. A human mind could hold these things, a privy such divine secrets. And I'm going to tell you something. This was not easy lesson to prepare. This is at one, I want this one, one word you mean. It to, to, for me to understand that took me it, it was a, a couple of good hours, a couple of good hours. And this is so this is what we see that all this is what King Solomon says. King Solomon says all the rivers go to sea in in uh, Mishlei and Proverbs, all the rivers go to sea. So he says, excuse me, that's Ecclesiastes, that's not Proverbs. He says, Ecclesiastes, all the rivers go to the sea. And this is what it means. We say everywhere we go. When we look at Hashem's right hand, we look at Hashem's compassion, it comes all out to Hashem accepting our tshuva, every single one of us. Hashem wants to bring us close, every single one of us, no matter who we are and where we are. So let me ask you a question. Beloved brother, beloved sister, why are you down on yourself? Hashem wants to bring you close and you don't want to bring yourself close? Hashem loves you and you don't want to love yourself? <laughs> this is a sign check from Hashem. Okay, and this, but why? You let later the, the evil inclination gets in your way. Don't let him. We're going to tie everything together, everything we learn.
Rabbi Nathan says, understand this well, because they're very deep. Thank you, Rabbi Nathan. <laughs> That's one thing. This is one thing we realized, that they are very deep. But Rabbi Nathan is saying that uh, we have to constantly search for Hashem. The person can say, wait a second, I don't need to search for Hashem. You remember we learned the Aleph? Remember we learned that if you have your Aleph chart? We have the Aleph, that we have the upper hand of the Aleph, we have the lower hand of the Aleph, and we have the Vav, the middle part of the Aleph. This represents the horizon, and the upper hand represents when you're up, and the lower hand represents when you're down. The upper hand represents the name Kasa, the lower hand represents the name Sad. So we say, maybe, maybe when I'm up, oh, I'm already flying high, I'm in the upper stratosphere, I'm flying high, but the hello heaven, here I am. Okay, no, you got to ask for Shem when you're up. And when you're down, you certainly have to ask for Shem. So this is what we learned in the segol, the three dots, that's the aspect also of the upper point of the olive, because that goes under the segol, is the name that goes under the ekye of kasa. And the chirik, the one dot, that is the aspect of the lower uh, part of the olive, because that corresponds to the lower point of the olive. And that is the one dot under the yud ke vav ke spelled out of the, the, the 63, the sag. Okay, so this is what, again, alluding to what King David tells us in Psalm 139, when I'm flying high in the heavens, there you are, Shem. When I'm down on the dumps, here you are too. Now, Rabbi Nathan Rabbi Na, says, we're going to tie everything together. Oh, now, Rabbi Nathan says, why did we learn the upper hand of the Aleph and lower hand of the Aleph. Why do we learn the anatomy of the Aleph? Because the upper hand, it corresponds to the up times in life, and the lower hand corresponds to the lower hands in life. So it's not a separate type of life. A person does lies it like the down times, the only likes the up times. It's like the Aleph. Imagine that the Aleph say, Hashem, I don't like my bottom hand. I just like my upper hand. Well, Hashem says Aleph. Let me tell you a little secret about yourself. You know how I created you? You hold my name, Aleph. You see, you've got a Yud that's worth 10 in Gematria. And I gave you a second Yud that's worth 10. And I put a Vav between. That's Vav. That's Yud K Vav K. That's 26. Little Aleph. If I take your Yud away and you just have up times, you can't be close to me anymore because you don't have my name in you. You're not half. You're complete. You are complete when you have up and down. This is life is complete when we have up and down, when we are have the expertise of knowing how to keep ourselves not arrogant when we're up, close to Hashem, and keep ourselves from depressed to depression, to despair and depression when we're down. This is life. This is the Aleph. Every one of us is an Aleph. Aleph is an Echad. Aleph is not Adam. Every one of us is an Aleph. And you've got to be an Aleph. This is, you have to be an expert in up and down. Remember last week's Ferris wheel. You're up and you're down. You're up and you're down. The heart expands and it contracts, expands and contracts. And that's the way it pumps blood through the body. If it doesn't expand, doesn't contract, you're not going to have blood in the body. You're not going to do your circulation. And person that got to live very long, maybe live for a minute. So that is the connection of the two. And this is all the concept of repentance. We learn the concept of repentance on repentance. And then we're going to go back one by one and learn from the very way. So one, two, three, four, five, and six, and seven, and seven, tie it all now. And this is well, I think, uh, the unraveling, like we said before, the French, the denouement, unraveling. Okay. The concept of repentance on repentance. Do you remember we learned it the first lesson? That there's upper honor and lower honor. Upper honor and lower honor. Now, upper honor, nobody could protest. Nobody could appeal it um, because it's concealed. Why is it concealed? Because you get it from the ket there, the upper tip of the aleph, the sphere of God that nobody's got any idea about. And the lower aleph that's down in this world, it's like a person's, uh, the person's wearing his, his rank. He's a big general. And uh, you're the general, who knows, maybe he was the prime minister's son-in-law, got to the ranks, or maybe he's the king's 
king's son and the king's son-in-law, king's son automatically goes to officer school. He doesn't go up through the ranks, not like a regular soldier. Who knows why he got that? Because he was born into it, didn't work for it. He didn't go to Mount Sinai like Moses did. He didn't get it from Hashem. This is human honor. You're the boss at the bank. Oh, he says, you're a clerk at the bank and he bosses you around because he signs your paycheck. But the money, you know, Hashem signs your paycheck, not him. But the day when he's in retirement and he was a nasty human being and he didn't treat the workers right, nobody looks at him because his honor, his old honor was the, the office and the name on the plaque. It wasn't that honor that Hashem gave him. Moses did, was not elected in human elections. King David was not elected in elections. King David was appointed. He was anointed. Hashem told Samuel the prophet to anoint David. And we see the greats in this generation. Reb Chaim Kanievsky, Reb Ovad Yosef. Did anybody appoint the Baba Sali? Oh, Baba Sali, you shall be the tzaddik of the generation. No. Baba Sali was like cream that he came to the top. And what cream? What cream? Who did nobody produce? This is all divine honor. It's right from the Keter. And when you see someone, see a real tzaddik, a real righteous person with divine honor, wow, it, it's just, it, it's complete. I have the privilege of, of seeing my own Rebbe, the, the Melissa Rebbe, my own team, he's got divine honor. And he's so humble. And he stays so far away. But if anyone ever got a blessing from him, if you want to, ask David Doom. Ask David Doom. David Doom got a blessing from him. And this was the, David's first relationship with the Melissa Rebbe. And David had a baby. And that baby wasn't supposed to live. And David asked the Melitza Rebbe for a blessing, and the Melitza Rebbe did what he did, invoked a blessing from his great-grandfather, the Baal Shem Tov. Uh, that baby that was not supposed to live is now a commando in Israeli special forces. He's a hulk. He's a hulk. If you see, that's a, that's Rambo, Rambo would not want to be in the ring with David's son, Yosef. He'd blow him out of the ring. This was a baby that was not supposed to live. This is a this is something right here. David's with us. He can, this is something right here. Uh, Rabbi Wolby, when he came to Israel, brought him to see the Melissa Rebbe. What's the Melissa Rebbe doing? Sitting and learning. An intrusive, nothing, this all. He, he's not, he's not there. He doesn't care. Someone once told him that uh, they, they wrote bad about him in the newspapers, secular newspapers. He says, I don't read the newspapers. He's not worried about his image. He's not worried about what people say to him. And he said, they say bad about me. Okay. They say bad about me. Then they, they, they'll take away my transgressions. And if they have, if they have something, they, I'll give them a present. I'll send them flowers for giving me their, their privileges. This is, this is divine honor. And this is the upper hand of the Aleph corresponds to the divine honor. The lower hand of the Aleph corresponds to human honor. And this is also a parable that all, both, all of us, our heads should be up with a sham. Our feet have to be down in this world. We have to do the mitzvot of this world. Person can't see, ah, oh, I'm flying. No, no, open your eyes. Uh, see where you could do good in this world. See who you could do a favor for. See what you do. But your head and your heart have to be with the Shem. Be with the Shem. We continue on. Zebat smot shuval tshuva. When a person, we learned that a person, when he first does penitence, it could be maybe it's fear of a punishment. Uh, maybe he doesn't want to have, he does fear prey to his income, he doesn't want to have his income being destroyed. The first tshuva, there's a lot of things for himself. When a person goes higher and he says, you know something, Hashem? The way I served you last year, uh, okay, I did tshuva for looking at, at, at 50 girls a day and I did tshuva, but did, now that, that's not good enough. No, that's not good enough to tshuva 50 girls a day. Like if I look at, at two girls a day, I'm going crazy. At that, uh, why did I transgress the Shem second day? Shem, I better do tshuva. But then now the ante is up. What was good last year is not good this year because we got to get closer to Shem. Okay, Shem, that is fine. I'll give you another example. A person keeps his first Shabbat, very first Shabbat, and the guy's a chain smoker. During the week, he speaks he's doing two packs of cigarettes, 40 cigarettes a day. And the one thing that kept him from Shabbat is afraid he never smoke it. But say, hey, listen. This is in the Ten Commandments. I'm going to keep Shabbat, my brother. This and that. Okay. So for Shabbat, he's straight. He's going crazy. The smoke is coming out of his eyes and his ears. So after he has this great big chunk for and then Shabbat in the afternoon, he can't resist. He took one cigarette. One cigarette. Well, at this level right now, he'll get 
Ganadin, he'll get rewarded with heaven for the one cigarette. But once he's Meshomer Shabbat and he's in the program five years, if he smokes that one cigarette, he's going to get the exact opposite. So that's an example, and it's a course example, how a person has to do tshuva on top of tshuva. But when he does tshuva the second time, it's not for himself. He's doing tshuva to get closer to Hashem. So what happens, explains Rebbe Natan, the first tshuva is for himself. Okay, that's fine. That's very respectable. For that, you will be rewarded, my son, my daughter, with human prestige. When you do the second tshuva on the same thing, the tshuva on the tshuva, because you're now at a higher level, that's for Hashem. Oh, you did it for Hashem? You go up, that tshuva goes up to the ket there? You don't know where how far you're going. And so you're invoking divine prestige from the ket there. This is your reward. You go up to the ket there, here I am, Hashem. Hashem says, okay, here I've got uh, some little spice candy from up here in ket there. Okay, and it's this, it's this little spiritual candy and I've got this hmm, divine honor. The, the circle, all of a sudden, you wonder, this. wow. The paths are opening up before you. That is the power of both tshuva. Okay, and this is what happens. And now, so where we go, we learned also in the first thing that we have to be uh, we have to be silent. We're going to get to that in a moment. And being the silent, when we handle verbal abuse, humiliation, uh, disparagement, embarrassment, and we keep quiet, then that is the dome, that is the silence. The dome is the same letters as blood. It's as important as a ritual sacrifice. So now we go to the Chuvashnia, it, it gets the upper, upper glory. Now Rabbi Natan says, Thank you, Rabbi Natan. We're trying. Everything we learned up till now, lessons one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, they all come together right now. And Rabbi Natan now says, and the most important thing, Rabbi Natan says, now this is the fat classic Rest left Torah of Itraskut. I don't know if any, there's plenty of Hasidic books, plenty of ethics books. Uh, Rabbi Natan, from the teachings he learned from Rabbi Nachman, was the master of self strengthening. It's called Itraskut. Self strengthening, a person that has self strengthening, Itraskut, will never need a psychotherapist, will never need a psychologist, will never need a psychiatrist, because this is the mastery the expertise of self-strengthening to strengthen yourself when you're down. So this is what Rabbi Natan is now teaching us that when a person is on the low level, he's down and feels like in purgatory. He can't learn. He can't pray. He feels like, like he's a, like he's a dummy. I think she's a dummy, like, like a, a scarecrow in the Wizard of Oz. Yeah, like the scarecrow. In the, and, and he says, there's still hope for you. Don't do that. There's still hope for you because Hashem is with you. Because even like King David says, if I make my bed in purgatory, there you are. There you are, Hashem. And the there you are, we proved it in the last lesson. That's the holy name Sag. The Yudke Vovke, the Sag, the, the, the value of 63, that's spelled out, Yud Vov Dalit, a Yud Vov Alevav, hey you. That's the, that letter. That holy name is down with you at the bottom. So the Yetzirah says, no, you're down. You're down. He's a liar. He's a liar. Yeah, you might be down, but Hashem is with you. There could be, this is one thing that's in Chaskut, that there could be no place on earth, no place in the universe, no place anywhere without Hashem. Hashem is everywhere. Wherever you are, Hashem is with you. And the thing about being down, it's dark down there. And the darkness, the evil inclination tries to take you away your eyesight. But when you remember Hashem's name, the Sag, Hashem's name, 63, Hashem, Hashem is down. Even if you can't remember that, Hashem is with me. Hashem is with me. This is Itraskut. Now, what is a hero? Is a hero, I had, I had an uncle who was a prize fighter. He was a, a, a boxing instructor in World War II. Before World War II, he went to uh, Penn State 
and he was a boxing champion, Penn State. He was a professional boxing champion, and he won his first 13 fights by knockout. And it, the guys were in the ring with her for a minute. Fight number 14, he went up against some guy, and the guy knocked him completely out, completely out. So I didn't consider my uncle a big hero. He was a, he was a, a bit aggressive and not the nicest person in the world. You know who the hero is? The hero is the guy that doesn't win the fight on the knockout. The hero is the guy that gets knocked down and gets back up, and he gets knocked down and gets back up, and he gets knocked down and gets back up. And by the end of the fight, he's got black eyes, he's got bruised face, and he shows a one knockout, and boom, in the 10th round, he blows the enemy off the court, blows him out of the ring. That is the hero. This is the, the, the evil inclination is giving us black eyes and bloody noses and knocking them down. And, and he's, he's, he's ripping our wallet apart and he's ripping our health apart and he's doing everything. We're trying to look what he did to Job. Look what he did. That, look what he did to Job. Look what he did to King David. King David, Hashem's anointed. Everybody in the world is against him. Not only that, he could see the Hashem is against him. He could say, wait a second. Okay, he could understand his father in law wanted to kill him. His two sons, not one son, two sons wanted to revolt against him. His closest advisor did a dirty on him, but double crossed him. Everybody, enemies within, enemies without. But when he got leprosy, leprosy, that's from you, Hashem. And what did Shakespeare say? A two brute? You too, Hashem? You two are tortured. They didn't do that. He held that it has good. He held on to Hashem. That's from you, Hashem. I know because you want me to do tshuva. You hold on to Hashem. Hold on to Hashem. Rabbi Nachman gives a sign check. There's no despair in the world, no matter what's going on right now. And just right, right now in Israel, in Israel, they, they go and the people are going and, and, and they're going crazy and, and they're taking money out of the bank and they're hoarding water and they're doing this and they're doing that. And they tell them to next in, in a couple of minutes is going to be fallout war with Iran. And who knows? Nah, forget it. It's all up to Hashem. It's like they can't. All the ballistic missiles in Iran and all the Hezbollah and all the enemies, they can't touch a hair on our head without Hashem's sanction. This is the Itraskut. This is our strength. Hashem owes Lamu Yiten. Hashem will give strength to his people. This is our strength. This is Itraskut. This is Torah Vav. This is the lesson for life. Being able to exist when you're up, being exist when you're down, not being boastful when you're up, not being sad when you're down, holding on to Hashem in the up mode, holding on to Hashem to the down mode. This is what we have to learn. And that was, and, and the same thing. We say it's, it's, it's obvious we have to hold on to Hashem when we're down. But Rabbi Nathan stresses, So a person gets an upper, an upper level. He goes to the upper level. You've got to hold on to Shem upper level because, oh, now you've got a secret guest up there. Hey, evil Ganesh is an angel. He can go up to the upper worlds. He, he knocks a person down here and then goes and uh, tattles on him, tattletales on him in the upper world. The evil Ganesh is back and forth between purgatory and the heavenly court. He's got a, he's a passport. He's, a, he's an archangel, archangel from the side of evil, but he's doing Hashem's will. So he's got good. He could certainly you're up on a up level. He's right there with you. He's got every level. He's got every level. He's got you know, evil inclination, like in basketball, has you on a full court press. There's no place on the court without the evil inclination. So when you're up, don't think oh, I'm a Hashem. The evil says, "Hey, you're great. You're you're up there. You're already great." No, no, no. Be careful, Hashem. So how do you do it, Chaskut, when you're on an up level? I'm close to Hashem, and I feel great. And I'm inspired in my prayers and I understand my learning. No, Shem, I want to get even closer to you. Now, desire, this is not, this is, this is not enough for me. I want to get closer to you. Just we have to be satisfied with what Hashem gives us materially. We don't have to be satisfied with spiritual. We all have to want more, want more, because want more spiritually is getting closer to Shem, getting closer to Shem. Because the Torah says, Shuvu ad Hashem, that we make Shuva until we reach Hashem. And so that. Uh, is how to do itraskut when we're on up mode. In the up mode, we have to do, we have to strengthen ourselves in the up mode too. Ki adam kafit mutafi itraskut shemit barach ki gurem leshet yushul mala mam shechalatzim kedusha. Wow, you got to bring riches to the world. When we strengthen ourselves here, you know what happens upstairs? We strengthen Hashem's name in the upper world. Hashem allows this to happen. Hashem allows Himself. 
to be honored, to be trampled on. Hashem doesn't take our free choice away. But this is what uh, our sages tell us. Do oz lelokim. Give strength to Hashem. What do you mean give strength to Hashem? Hashem is omnipotent. He's omniscient. What do you mean give strength to Hashem? When we strengthen ourselves, because our neshamas now understand this beautiful point. Our neshamas are a tiny part of Hashem. So if our neshamas are a tiny part of Hashem, we're strengthening our neshamas. In the traskut, in the then we're actually strengthening giving strength to Hashem. What's giving strength to Hashem? When you strengthen yourself wherever you are, in the corner of the earth, wherever you are, then you're helping Hashem's name being strengthened all through the universe. It is mind-boggling. And a person goes to this life and says, what am I doing? What am I doing? <laughs> you're doing, you're a hero. You're a hero. Just by getting closer to Hashem, you're correcting the world. Rabbi Nathan continues, Wow. Now we go back to what we learned in the first lesson, and we're tying everything on together. Why do we have to be quiet when someone insults us? We're not even quiet. It means don't. Quiet is sheket. You shek it. No. Don't. Silent. Dome, the difference between silent and quiet is my heart is silent. I could be silent like this and grit my teeth. Oh, when I just had the chance, well, I'm going to get the gun. No, silent. This is what King David, this, this is how King David cured his own leprosy. When Achitopel, not, not Achitopel, when Shimi ben Gera cursed him and King David, King David's Avishai, his lieutenant general, wanted to kill him. And King David says, no, leave him alone. Hashem told him to curse. When he said Hashem told him to curse, right there, his leprosy he had for six months left him. That's it. This is so powerful. When you are insulted, first of all, we wrote, I wrote a whole book about that by most popular Hebrew book. It's called Nafshi Tidom. It's all about verbal insult. When you're insulted, this can save you bankruptcy. This can save you a head-on collision. This could save a heart attack. When Hashem sends someone to insult us, Hashem is doing us a big favor because the dome, the silence, is the same letters as dam, blood. Instead of spilling our blood, Hashem is giving us the opportunity to be silent. So Hashem takes us one step further. Rabbi Nath does us one step further. If you can judge that person fairly, at that point, you now become a level of Baba Sali Lubavitcher If you could say, well, wait a second, the person maybe grew up with abusive parents and he's abusive to other people and he doesn't know me, maybe he does know me, maybe some nincompoop, maybe he's right. Okay, so I'll have to do tshuva. You do that. At that moment, at that moment, I can tell you stories. I mentioned it, I think it was three lessons ago, about a 52-year-old woman that never had kids and she got insulted and she smiled and she closed her eyes. She had tears because it, it hurt. It hurt, but she quiet. She closed her eyes, saw the Shem. But she was 51 when that happened. When she was 52, she gave birth to her first child. This is the power of Dom La Shem, of being silent to a Shem in the face of verbal abuse. And even more so, says Rabbi Nathan, what he did not say back in our first lesson in the beginning of Torah 6, this is now. Go a step further. Now that you've learned Hashem's names, now you learn up and down, do another mitzvah and judge that person fairly. Find something. Now he's going to explain why we need to judge that person fairly. Here's the reason. Okay, he gives, Rabbi Nathan gives us a parable from the Midrash. The Midrash says like this, a person found his friend, friend is a goldsmith or silversmith, and he says, what are you doing, my mate? He says, oh, I'm making a crown for the king. Oh, that crown is for the king? Then put every good jewel you have in that. And here, I'll donate one too. And he takes out a nice ruby, a nice sapphire, and he gives it to him. Oh, this is for the king? Okay. I had this myself, maybe. You know, instead of me just wearing a, uh, this fancy sapphire on, on my hand, a nice ring, put it in the king, let it be a jewel of the king. So now, 
Rabbi Nathan says something. Listen, now listen to this. Listen to this. We learn. You have to be up and down. And raise. This is Itchaskut. Don't ever be down on yourself. I said it three times already this lesson. I said time number four. Drive the nail in. Don't ever be down on yourself because you are a jewel in Hashem's crown. You are one of Hashem's beloved children. You're a jewel in Hashem's crown. Look at my nine words. Rabbi Nathan, Rabbi Nachman. Kol echad u'prinat ketel Hashem yitbarach. Everyone is an aspect of Hashem's crown. And you have to put as many gems as you can find. What's the gems you can find? The good points. You find the good points. Rabbi Nachman, Rabbi Yatsa, these people talk about it, but Rabbi Nachman would not, would not let anybody, anybody say anything bad about the people that opposed him. He said they're listening to their rabbit. They're listening to their, their posters. Okay, their posters. They're listening to their rabbit. He wouldn't oppose them. <laughs> this is, wow. This is, it's, I, I heard a story this week. I, I had a story this week, uh, uh, a story about a soifer, uh, the son of one of, one of my friends is a, a scribe. He writes Sifri Torah. And he got a, a order from a Satmar Hasid. And the Satmar Hasidim, they don't recognize the state of Israel. They don't recognize Zionism. So this particular chassid is a vision of chassid that they do recognize the state of Israel. And they take part in elections and this and that. So when he gave the Sefer Torah, the Satmar chassid told the soifer, the scribe, I'll give you the order, but I'm not going to allow you to vote in elections. Anybody who writes a Sefer Torah, me can't vote in elections. Okay. So the soifer went to get a blessing from the Rebbe, the vision of Rebbe. So the vision of Rebbe he told the Vishnu Rebbe what this guy said. Vishnu Rebbe says, no. He says, give me the phone number of this guy. So he gave him the phone number. The Vishnu Rebbe himself dialed the number in Williamsburg in Brooklyn. And he says, are you Rabbi Cohen? He says, yes. He says, uh, why do you tell my students to go against me? He says, oh, me? Heaven forbid. No, he says, he didn't say I'm the Vishnu Rebbe. He said, this is Israel Hager. That's the name of the Vishnu Rebbe. He said, why do you tell my students to go against me? He says, me, Rebbe, God forbid. He says, well, you told my student that if he writes a safer Torah for you, he's not allowed to vote. And I tell all my students to vote. He says, oh, Rebbe, you to go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. He knows that you don't. Okay, this is Rebbe Nachman. He, this is, uh, you don't tell, the guy's listening to his Rebbe. And the Rebbe says, Rebbe Nachman's an incapoop. We don't hold by breast of the Torah. There are Hasidim that don't learn breast of the Torah. Okay, we don't fight them. We don't argue with them. And people talk bad against them. No, that's real breast of a chassid. You don't talk bad about anybody in the world, not a human in the world. That's it. And because why? Every human is a gem. Every human is a gem. Not only that, every human is good. Every human is a crown. And every human is a good points are gems in that crown. And that's why you have to look for the good points. We look for the good points. And we look for the good points. This also strengthens the shem. Because when a person says about another person, uh, that's Hashem's creation. Okay, a person is not bad. A person shows a bad way. He shows a temporary bad way. But people are, are bad. There are people that are evil that they chose to live evil lives, life of a, a terrorist, the life of a, a, the people that persecute other people. Okay, but a person that does something bad, steps on your toe, insults you, okay, steps on your emotional toe, Person good, we have to look for the good in everyone, whatever we can. The Gemara tells a story about that, about our sages were walking the street and they saw a dead dog. And well, what can you say about a dead dog? And one said to the other, look how white its teeth are. So if you can find something good to say about a dead dog, what can you do about a, a live brother, a live sister? Well, because we're all sons and daughters of Hashem. So now Rabbi Natan concludes, we're in the last, last uh, sentence, that the person that insults us, he thinks that's the proper thing to do for the way he sees, that the way his, the glasses he's wearing. Ah, but when we're quiet, we uplift ourselves to the aspect of Keter. We don't even understand it, but we get there. And that is the up. You know what that does? What the dividends of Keter we get divine abundance. We bring divine abundance to the world. We get spiritual abundance. We get every blessing. We get divine prestige. It's a bit. And this creates Keter. This creates, this creates a crown for Hashem. 
And with that, we conclude Torah Vav. So let's make a quick, a quick summation of the eight lessons we learned very quickly. It is very powerful to be quiet when we're insulted. How can a person possibly be quiet? It's, they said, humanly possible. Yes, humanly, according to human, if you don't put the divine soul, if you just talk about the animal soul, the animal soul, okay, you get insulted animal, the animal's going to growl right back at you. And better be careful because he might growl worse. He'll do the body retaliate. But when we activate the divine soul and we see the Shem did, does, and will do everything, first principle of Muna, then we plug into a Shem. That is when we plug into a Shem, that is the only way to be silent, not quiet, silent, the heart silent. A Shem told him to do it. A Shem told him to do it. By doing the Shem told him, we get ket there. The ket there takes us to the upper hand of the Aleph. The upper hand of the Aleph, the Aleph is the whole person. The Aleph is the whole letter. The Aleph cannot be with the upper hand and a lower hand. That the upper hand is the name Kasa that connects us to the upper worlds. Lower hand is the name Sag that keeps us in this world, keeps us strengthening when we're low, and the upper hand strengthening when we're high. And the Vav is the Rakia, the Vav is the horizon, and this separates it also that the upper hand of the Aleph we learn corresponds to Moses, the teacher, and lower hand to Joshua, which is the student, Moses and Joshua. Let's go back and forth. And we have the upper hand is, is Keter, the lower hand is Malchut, that brings out Emuna, what we need down in this world. Emuna is down in this world. Because what's Emuna? You don't have Emuna in the upper world. And Emuna, there's no Emuna in the upper world. In Emuna, you can see Hashem, you see everything going on. When you, as soon as you leave the body, everybody has instant Emuna. And that's when you go crazy. Why do you Emuna in this world? Emuna is the lower hand of the olive. That's the bottom tip of the olive. Just as the upper tip is the worlds we don't know, the lower tip of the olive. That brings us down to this world, and that's where we really need Amuna. We really need Amuna right now when there's a war going on in Gaza, when it, people have uh, sons in the army, and, and, and they're in Gaza, and in the West Bank, there's a war going on there. And who knows if there's a, 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 a later match, and it, there could be a full-out war in the Middle East, dragging them. Don't know. You have to have Amuna to know that everything is for the best. And to keep it even leal, even heal. And this is this is what we're talking. So this is why we need the two expertises being expertise in up, being expertise in down. And this is itchaskut, self-strengthening, for which without we can't live. Cherished brothers and sisters, it's been an honor and a pleasure to learn this Torah with you. And Hashem should help us implement it every way we can. Go back and and, and see the lessons, the, the review of it and make it so it's a Kenyan, it becomes part of your neshama, an, an asset. Okay, and have a wonderful, wonderful Shabbat.